Good morning. How are you doing? I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to be here with you this morning. Let's do some catch up. I guess you are all just pretty much ready for your summer plans, or maybe some of you have gone and come back, or you're heading out, you're in this time of transition. Uh, schools has finished, uh, summer has started, graduations have happened, all of that, right? Pretty much? Yeah? Yeah, I would think so. So let me um, also catch up with you a little bit about myself. The last time I came here, I had shared some stories, but specifically about my parents, and I just wanted to give you a little update. First of all, thank you for all the prayers that you've been giving on their behalf. Uh, many of you have come to me and say all the time, how they're doing, what's going on, how are things going? They're doing great. I really appreciate your prayers. And actually next week on Monday, I will ask you for your prayers because we're all heading together over there because we are going to be doing sort of our own little family mission trip. We're going to go clean out the property, clear debris, just get it all closed up and ready for whenever the time comes when it's time to sell because they have decided to stay here in the U.S. So thank you so much for your prayers and we'll be heading that way and doing that. So we're, we're very grateful for, for that. So um, I'd like to um, begin with prayer and then we'll, we'll start um, continuing on in our series uh, for this morning. So let's bow your he our heads together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful privilege of being able to be here together. We get to spend some time together talking to you. We've been worshiping you. And I just pray now that you will open our hearts, that we may receive what you have for us. And as the song just say, Father, we want to follow you. When you show us all the amazing things you have for us, Father, we want to say, so will I. I want to be there. So we thank you that we get those amazing opportunities that you open up for us, that give us purpose, that give us life to be able to follow you wholeheartedly. So we thank you for your blessings today. In your name we pray. Amen. So we are continuing our series on grow stuff, the stuff that God uses to grow our faith. And you already know we've talked about the good stuff, the good stuff that comes in our lives that we can enjoy. We've also talked about the bad stuff that we don't like so well, but they still happen. We have to be realistic, right? The bad stuff that goes on in our lives that is so challenging at times and so, try, <laughs> so trying to us, but they're real in our lives, so they help us grow our faith. We also talked about the people that are in our lives, the people who influence us, the people who impact us, the people that perhaps can turn us in the wrong directions if we don't choose the right ones, our friends. And today we continue with this series and we talk about purpose. Not kind of any purpose in general, although we are going to look at some general themes and ideas of what purpose is, but much more talking about our God-given purpose. So we've been looking at this phrase over time, the last few weeks, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now, if you look online, you see that this statement has been attributed to someone by the name of Wayne Dyer, who does a lot of topics, self-help talk, talks. And he actually admittedly says that this is not his own statement that he found it along the way when he was young and he sort of had adopted it on his own life and it was because he came to a time a perspective in his life where he said you know something has to change and he found this to be true in his life when you change the way you look at things the things you look at change which means that we are having new eyes now we can't change the eyes that we have right but it just means that we are changing some things. We're taking a realistic step into making a decision, into how we see things. So it's new eyes into looking at how things come at us. It's changing our perspective, how we go about things. 
also opening ourselves to being influenced to consider perhaps new ideas, consider new views, to consider the information that's coming at us all the time, but mostly to listen, to listen and be more curious. It's okay to do that. Sometimes we let life just go on by, by us, and we're not even paying attention. But this means that we take the time to make a concerted effort to pay attention to what is going on. We're going to be curious about it. Why is that happening to me? What is up with this? So we're opening ourselves to the moments that come in our lives. So we're going to be looking about the, uh, uh, on this today. Evaluation and purpose. Evaluating the moments, the experience, all of those moments that come in our lives and the purpose for those moments. So as you see, I have just a little play on letters here. This is pretty much what I would say, you know, trying to figure out our purpose, but it's sort of like moving forward. We are trying to figure out the process to our purpose. So that's what that stands for, process to purpose, just moving forward. It's something that's ever developing, always moving forward. Sometimes you feel that maybe you're not getting quite far enough and you're going back and then moving forward again. This is what life is. But this is more so when we're looking for purpose, when we're looking to what it is that we have to do, it is something that is moving forward. So it's a process to purpose, moving forward. And, you know, you ask people around, and most everyone would admit that their lives is constantly on a stage of transition. I mean, I, I'm sure that if I were to ask you, you would admit to this, that you are constantly in a stage of transition. You haven't felt like you have arrived, that you had gotten to the point where you could say, okay, I have landed, here I am, everything can go around me, but I am done. I don't think that anybody would admit that because we know, and we have to be realistic, we know that our life is constantly moving. We're constantly doing things. Things around us are changing. So we are constantly on this stage of transition. There's like this pathway of sorts. And rather than feeling completely fulfilled, we are constantly seeking for something, seeking for our purpose, what it is that we have to do. In fact, this is a question that we ask all the time. If you go on social media, all of the things that people are showing you, I mean, think about it. Look at the pictures. Hey, look where I am. I'm over here in Paris. Oh, I'm over here in Spain. Oh, I'm here or there. What are they doing there? Looking for something, right? Or fun, to spend time away, to rest. They're always looking for something. Or perhaps they make some kind of thought, something they're thinking about, or something that they may be considering. Everyone is at this point and asking at some point, what am I here for? Lord, everything I am doing, this doesn't make sense. What is going on? What am I doing here? What am I contributing to life? Does it matter? And we all struggle with this. So many of us go through life wondering about this. In fact, some of us would even say, I'm really wondering about my life. I don't think that what I'm, not, what I'm doing right now is of value, that it's even meaningful. I haven't figured it out. I don't know what is going on. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Have you heard those, those words before? The U2 song? I've been singing this song all week, okay? So now you have it in your head. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And you continue your whole life crying about it. I still haven't found it, Lord. I am looking for this. It's, it's, it's out there, but it hasn't come to me. Hello? Where are you? It completely evades us, right? So, hey, we go through life considering these things. So let's consider this 
12th century poet who says, every being is intended to be on earth for a certain purpose. So we know, I mean, this is way back then. This has been the quintessential question for all of us. What am I here for? I'm looking for it. So you may say that you may not be necessarily religious or spiritually inclined, but you may feel this sort of tug or this longing for that certain something that defines and integrates your life in a way that makes you happy. We all feel it. We don't have to be spiritual to be able to feel that because it's naturally innate in us. We all have this need towards some kind of outcome or fulfillment in our lives. And some may feel that they have accomplished some goals, something. I've gotten there somewhat, but yet you feel hollow, empty, and unfulfilled. And this feeling may be described as being off track. And you know, it doesn't matter what class you're part of, doesn't matter what race, doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, a child or old, it doesn't matter. We all struggle through this. We all have these opportunities that come along us that define our lives. Do you ever feel these questions come upon you? I mean, I, some of my friends will even ask them on Facebook. It is real. We feel incomplete despite what you might describe as a conventional successful life. Even to the point that at times you wonder if you have taken the wrong path all, all, all along. Chosen perhaps a wrong career or made other wrong turns or choices. You may even wonder how you can tell if you're making a difference because all you sense is unhappiness, dissatisfaction, incompleteness, and absence of inner peace, and not being fully in sync with yourself. Could you imagine these families that are coming across the border that have had planned, you know, these families coming together with the children who have planned this bright future, this hope of, above anything else to be able to come into this country to give the children what they have not been able to achieve. That's what I call purpose. They're courageous. They just come across. And then to have to deal with the things that they're dealing with right now, right, dealing with right now being separated from one another, just horrid to think about those things. But these are people who are looking for purpose, looking for something better. And it's important for us not to confuse Seeking happiness with finding purpose. See, happiness is what you experience in your flow of life. It's, it's a feeling. It's, it's, it's experiencing the daily flow of life. The highs and the lows that are situational. They fluctuate. But purpose, purpose is much deeper. Psychologists describe purpose as an underlying sense of peace and fulfillment overall, a sense of integration and continuous unfoldment of your being. Sounds very scientific, right? But really, just getting that sense and that feeling that, that you have gotten that, that, that to the place where you want to be, that you feel fulfilled, yes, this is what I have wanted to do all my life. I finally found it. Well, the things that go around our lives among the people who find their purpose say, one of the things I explain is they're preoccupied with self-interest. It's not about me. It's about others. Also, they use their mental and creative energies to serve something larger than themselves. So just think about these things. They're not preoccupied with themselves, and they serve something larger than themselves. So think about these things. There are also some guidelines when you're trying to look for purpose. There's examination. You begin by examining what's currently 
happening with your choices, the choices that you're making, your way of life and commitments, looking from outside yourself. And, when do you, and you also have the feeling and pursuit. When you feel a pull towards some purpose, activity, or goal that reflects your inner self, and then to pursue it fully and vigorously and with great intent. And then you infuse all of your activity, your actions, with a spirit of giving, of service, in effect, with love for what you're engaging in. And this is a, a, a very, I mean, all across the board, people who feel like they have found their purpose, this is what they describe. So there's this pull of purpose happening. And this pull is not imaginary. I'm sure that you, you know what I'm talking about. You have felt this tug, this thing that says, what is it? It is something that is hard to describe. But here's an example of someone who tried to describe what that pull of purpose is. It's from Hazra Inaya Khan, who is, I'm sure I'm killing the name. All right, but he's a Sufi spiritual leader from the 1900s. He came to the U.S. from Western Europe, and he was teaching in the early 1900s. And this is how he describes it. One may suddenly think during the night, I must go to the north. Have you ever felt like that? I must go north. And in the morning, he sets out on his journey. He's just, he doesn't know why. He doesn't know what he is to accomplish there. He only knows that he must go. By going there, he or she finds something that she has to do and sees that it was the hand of destiny pushing him or her towards the accomplishment of that purpose which inspired him or her to go to the north. So what is your north? What is it that's giving you that pull to get there? You know, the world, the way it, uh, around us exists as we allow ourselves to see it. Anything in life is simple, an interpretation of the meaning we give to it in life. The perspective or understanding that you are the one in control. So if you're somebody who sees things kind of like half glass, you kind of approach it differently than somebody who is very optimistic and that glass is way full. You know, you know these kind of people who are very positive all the time you, and, and they see everything sort of differently than you do. And yes, yeah, sometimes things are very real for us and there are things that happen that, you know, can upset us, can, can, can be horrible. But there's a way to approach it that we can see the good in it. So... This is, this is what, what we have to think about. So what are we doing about it? Do we choose to ha make it have a negative impact in our lives? Or do we choose to make it have a positive impact in our lives? We are who we believe we are. This is very, very true. Uh, there's a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson that says, Whatever course you decide upon, there's always someone to tell you that you are wrong. There are always difficulties arising that tempt you to believe that your critics are right. To map out a course of action and follow it to an end requires courage. Great courage. Because sometimes these individuals can be very successful. Uh, killing your dreams, are killing your purpose. Words like difficult, impossible, have no meaning until we give them life. You determine a goal and how you're going to achieve it. From, you're going to go from point A to point B to point C to point D until the day you die. You can map up your path and make it happen, or you can create reasons to believe that it is impossible, that it's difficult, too hard, and that you can't do it, that success is not for you. 
So there are some foundational ideas as you, as you think about seeking your purpose in life that, that sort of just underrides this, this journey of purpose. First of all, authenticity, being real, recognizing the challenges, the things that are coming ahead of you and moving forward, things that can be felt and seen, going to a deeper level, just really seeking it out, and setting goals that are important to you and moving you towards those goals and taking full responsibility for your life. Also letting go of things that may get beyond your control. Embracing the reality of what's happening around you. Making rapid shifts and making deep creative contributions to the community around you. And a couple more, commitment to certain values that you would just adopt to and becoming the source of attitude. The attitude that you're going to adopt towards those situations as you're moving forward. So we find ourselves in this quandary in our lives where we're moving forward, we're, we're moving along, doing these things, and sometimes we stop. Something stops us, and then we feel like we have to start again. Or we continue moving forward, but nothing really is happening. It's just kind of there. You're just coasting along life and just... You know, nothing interesting. I like just being here. I don't like being challenged. I, I, I'm comfortable here. But then not feeling like you're getting anywhere. So we have to understand this basis to finding our purpose because this is what gives us the, 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 the major steps to be able to recognize when it is time for us to step forward and move over to, move over to a goal or make a decision. So we need to think about also how this impacts us as we live with one another as Christians, as we live with God, and more importantly, our God-given purpose. Is there a difference? Is there a difference between the purpose that we choose for life and the purpose for God? Well, truthfully, there are people who kind of see it as two different ideas, two distinct things. I am this during the week, and I am this on the weekend. Or I'm going to choose to do this, and then I'll give God this little bit of time. There are others who feel that the foundational themes and ideas that I've just shared with you are all in the same. They're all part of it. But when it comes to our God-given purpose, we have to remember that that's what it is, a life for God's purpose. So we are removed. God comes in. So let's look at a text from one of the authors of the Bible, Paul, a follower of Jesus. Now, you know his life, or maybe if you haven't heard of him, he was also named Saul, and he was persecuting Christians. And then he had an encounter with Jesus, a personal encounter with Jesus. As His life changed, and he became a follower. And we go to a little excerpt of a letter that he writes to the Philippians. The Philippians were, uh, a, a Philippi was a colony of Rome, and they follow a lot of the traditions that Rome had. So he's writing this letter to the Philippians in Philippi, a colony of Rome, and you know how Rome's uh, kingdom was, very oppressive at times. And during this time, as we look into this text, I'm telling you this because this is really important. Paul is in prison when he writes this. He is imprisoned for being a follower of Jesus. So he's writing this letter because the people of Philippi have sent him a gift. They want, to, they want him to know that they've been thinking of him. So he writes this letter and to thank them, but at the same time, he's trying to encourage these believers, the believers of this church in Philippi, and to encourage them in their faith. So we turn to Philippians 4.13. This is the expanded version. 
Philippians 4.13 happens to be my favorite Bible text. And it says, I can do all things through Christ because he, who is he? The one who, him, Christ, gives me strength. Paul wrote this, if I can remind you again, he was where? In prison. And he's telling them, I cannot do all these things because Christ gives me strength. So what is he saying here? First of all, it's a promise that Paul is sharing with them. Do not be discouraged because Christ will give you the strength to go through anything. He's saying, hey, I'm here in prison, but that doesn't matter. This is minor compared to what I'm going through. He shares that Jesus gives the power, the strength for everything that we need. He says this right there. He can do all things. We can do all things. I think that all those three little letters are very important. We can do all things through Christ because Jesus gives us the strength, the power. So he shares that Jesus gives us the power and the strength, everything we need to do everything. And this is what happens in, between, in the difference between just purpose and purpose for God. Because God is the one that can give us the power to go through everything. Absolutely everything. And here's Paul demonstrated to them, listen, it doesn't matter that I'm in prison. This is just a little thing. I count it a joy. If you read through that book and many of his letters, through everything that he was going through, he would say, I count it a joy, a privilege, a pleasure to go through whatever it is. I don't care. But all I want is to tell of Jesus, of his love to everyone. So he is sharing this thing with his individuals. And he also talks about the joy that we can find in the suffering, in the serving, and believing and giving. This is what this book is all about. And Paul was happy because he could see everything. Here's the difference. He could see everything through God's point of view. Can we say that? That we can see everything through God's point of view? Man, there are times I don't even know what God wants. But this is what he's saying. When we remove ourselves and allow God, if I allow Jesus to give us that power, it gives us a different perspective. This is what we're talking about. When you look at things differently, they change. So we add God's point of view there. So he focused on what he was supposed to do. Not what he felt he should have. Not what he felt like it at the moment. Not what he felt should happen. No, he focused on God. His priorities are straight. And he was grateful for everything that God had given him. So Paul is saying that we can accomplish our God-given purpose because Jesus can provide everything. Can you believe that? Jesus can provide everything we need to be able to do so. So what's the problem here? When, when, when we don't see these things working out the way we want them to be, perhaps we need to look at things differently, a different perspective. We must draw on God's power for strength because it's not easy. The focus is our perspective, our priorities, and the source of power. And that comes from Jesus. We draw it from him because things are not easy. Many of the stories and, and authors that write, wrote in the Bible share the challenges that they went through. So it's not a guarantee that as we're seeking our God's given purpose, that everything is going to be smooth sailing. We know that. So what is it then that we are getting wrong about our God-given purpose? Because oftentimes I feel that we sort of go at things or go at it thinking that we're in control, that we know what we're doing, and 
It's up to us to figure it out. So let me share some things with you. So first of all, we assume that purpose, our God-given purpose, is a fancy destination and not a, not a long journey, a long, dusty journey. We might think that it's like applying for a job. Well, just, you know, put a few extra skills that I've picked up, you know, sharpen all these things, and we submit the res resume, and when we land the job or we land whatever, we keep it for life. But it isn't straightforward like that. God created marriages and parenthood. And he created parents, aging parents that we care for. God didn't design our purpose to fit only one stage of life. Our purpose is ever evolving with him. He wants us to grow. This is what this grow stuff is about. It's a multifaceted apprenticeship with Jesus, if you can see it that way. It's not a clearly defined role. That's why we can't just say, okay, I'm going to pick this up and say, okay, God, I need to show me right now my purpose. What is it? And I don't hear you. I don't hear you telling me what it is. And yet, if we would open our eyes or change the way we see, we can catch a glimpse and we can see, okay, God, all right, I can see what's going on here. You're moving this way. So I have found that the ebbs and flows of my life are both modeled in Scripture, like wandering the desert, or reflected in nature like cycles of tides or moons or my own body. I'm in a long journey, and that journey may be really dusty and dry. But sometimes there's some really good, wonderful oasis. Towards God's kingdom, that's what it's all. We don't just park till retirement. It's not like that. It's always moving. The last time I, I was here, I shared with you the story of my husband passing away. But I didn't tell you the rest of the story. I stopped there because little by little, I, I, I shared glimpses with you. But after I died, I remember, God... How can you do this to me? I mean, I got right down indignant with God. How dare you, God? And you know, I've learned that God can handle any question I have for him. Any. He does. He can. I said, God, how dare you? After all that I have done for you. After all that we had done for you. We were pastors in ministry. Working together. God, how can you let this happen? And God, ever so patient. Marilyn, Marilyn, Marilyn. Just watch. Just watch what I'm doing for you. And little by little, things just began to move forward. I had to give it up with the questioning. Because I think God just said, okay enough just pay attention and he had to get my attention there was just so many things happening that i just didn't know where to go and he said pay attention i got something for you and it's gonna be just it's just gonna blow your socks off marilyn i met greg we started dating we got married wonderful husband by the way i love you <laughs> God has blessed me with an amazing husband, and our life has flourished. And then later on, God started showing me, Marilyn, I want you to be a pastor. What? Uh-uh. No, God. I don't think so. Little by little, as I gave myself to him, as I finally said, okay, God, I give up. I don't know what else to do. I don't know what you want from me. I don't know what to do. And God said, just let me. Let me take the wheel. Let me ride. Let me, let me show you. And as he did that, little by little, he led me there. 
So here's another thing that we get wrong about our God-given purpose, is that we think that purpose is prestigious, that it's supposed to be, you know, this amazing thing. Wow, you have done it. You have arrived. You are awesome. And it is not. Oftentimes, it's in the mundane. You know, we're mothers changing diapers, stinky explosions diapers. Sometimes we must admit it. You know, we, we're just spending time feeding our kids, feeding our husbands. Okay, I'm talking from the ladies' perspective, okay? I can. So, you know, cooking, cleaning, teaching, being in our jobs, doing all this stuff. And then you wonder, God, hello? This isn't my purpose. I didn't sign up for this. And God says, yes, that is your purpose now. That is where you're needed. Right now, right here. And honestly, we may be tired of doing all those things, but the mundane tasks in our lives, caring for that elderly parent, enduring financial hardship, making peace with singleness, are all meaningful because that's where you are right now. That's where, that's, this is where things are guided, leading you and guiding you to. Sure, we wish prestige. Who wouldn't, right? God has used our ambitious and gifts intelligence to form our purpose in a very important way. And we're each unique. Just because one person has done it doesn't mean that we're going to get there the same way. That's the amazing thing about God. God works with each one, single one of you in a different way. That is a miracle in itself. We would not be able to be a whole or complete person if he didn't do that. The mundane or the insignificant things that we do, as we may feel about them, may not get us the accolades or the recognition that we look for, but that intentional work we have to do right here, right now, can transform us to be the people that God wants us to be. And it can also prepare us for greater things to accomplish his purpose. A little moment ago, I shared that God asked me, he called me to be a pastor. And you know what I did? I became Jonah. That's exactly what I did. I started running away from God. I said, oh, no, God, no. I've been there, and I'm not doing that. No. I got invitations to pastor, and I said, no. I said, no, no, God, you don't want me there. And it came to the point when I finally had people coming to me out of nowhere, randomly, confirming God's call. And I had to finally say, okay, God, I recognize this. You know when that happened? I was at a Target shopping. I'm in line, and I get in a conversation with a guy, and he was sharing with me things that were happening with me, with him, I mean, things that were happening with him. And all of a sudden, I don't even remember what I told him. But I was talking to him, trying to encourage him. And then he said, you know, you sound like a pastor. I'm like, oh, no, you didn't say that. He said, you do. I'm, I feel a lot of hope from the words that you've shared with me. And I remember getting in the car, and I'm like, no, 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 God. No, 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 no. Because I was the third person that pretty much has said exactly the same thing to me. And I finally said, okay, God. All right. You want me to do this? All right, I'm giving myself to you. If this is to be, you open the doors. A month later, I had a call. That's when I started working at Spencerville as a pastor. And now I'm here. So God, all these different things that have happened over time have helped me grow to become to this, the, the person that I am today to be here with you. But you see, the pain, the suffering, all these things that I had before have helped me 
be able to also offer hope to others. I wouldn't have known about that had I not experienced it. The death, the death of someone, the pain and the suffering that goes with that, I wouldn't have known about that unless I had experienced it myself. I wouldn't have known about so many other things had it not been because I have experienced those things. So going moving forward, we think that purpose is deadly serious when there is a lot of joy. God has created us to enjoy life, and we should. Seeking his purpose should bring us deep joy. We will endure the hardships. We will work doing this taskless task that we're supposed to do. But if our purpose makes us come alive while doing those things, we can find joy. But if you reverse that, if those tasks that we're doing do not bring us joy, then we're doing something terribly wrong. If your life feels like you're dead, if there's anxiety or exhaustion or bitterness, it, it, everything overwhelm you, get professional help. That is your purpose right now, to heal. See, I had to heal before I could move forward. I had to get help when I was going through my grieving in order to be able to be hope, helpful to others. So sometimes our God-given purpose is to heal, to get to the point where the purpose is clear and we continue seeking his guidance. So ordinary hard work lit by God's purpose can be amazingly, extraordinarily satisfying. And the next one is we think our purpose is up to us. So here's the difference. It is not. There's nothing like how God can work out his purpose in our lives. God gives us gifts and abilities that allow us to be useful. And his spirit can give us bravery and wisdom and strength. He guides us and he gives us the power to do it. Apart from him, there's nothing that we can do that is meaningful. And this is what people struggle with because they think they can do it themselves. And so often I hear, you know, especially now around this time, the graduation speeches, I always hear the same thing. All oh, this power is within you. If you seek hard, if you, you can do all these things. I beg to differ. Without God, we can't do anything. Apart from him, there is nothing that we could do that is meaningful, fulfilling, and valuable in terms of eternity. Again, how you look at things, a matter of perspective and priorities. And when we, we feel useful, we are grateful. Here's a quote by Anne Lamott. Gratitude begins in our hearts and then dovetails into behavior. It almost always makes you willing to be of service, which is where the joy resides. It means that you're willing to stop being such a jerk when you're aware of all that has been given to you in your lifetime and the past few days. It is hard not to be humbled and pleased to give back. It's an interesting perspective. So what is our job within God's purpose? Well, it's very simple. Our job is to yearn, to have this communication, this collaboration, this partnership with God in our lives, to notice when we are stuck and intentionally seek help. There are others out there that can help you with that. To pay attention to what's going around you, God is trying to get your attention. He's deep, desperately seeking you out. See, and with everything that we do and so many distractions and all these things, we say, okay, God, no, 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 no. But he wants to be there. You ask. Ask all the questions. Get, go to people. Seek it out. Knock. So many times we think that the opportunities are going to come knocking to us. No. It's not like that all the time. I wish I could say a word, but it's not. Sometimes you're the one who has to do the knocking. And then be curious about the next steps. Okay, God, what, where do we go from here? And to have, God's, to have eyes to see God's purpose in everything. 
to be joyful, to, to be willing. So even when things are mumbled and jumbled up and you're feeling lost, discouraged, and making mistakes, understand that it's okay to not know exactly where we fit. Eventually, those things become clearer. It's okay to cry in frustration. It's okay to ask the questions, God, really? He understands. He wants, he wants to hear from you, period. It is okay to ask for wisdom and help. Why? Well, let's look at another text from the Bible real quickly here. From, again, from Paul in the book of Romans. And here, Paul is laying the foundation of the Christian faith. So what to believe and how to behave. Romans 8, 28. 28. We know that in everything God works, or God works everything together, or everything works together for the good of those who love him. They are the people he called because that was his plan according to his purpose. God works in all things, not just isolated incidents for our good. This doesn't mean that all happens, that everything that happens is good. Evil is prevalent in this fallen world. But God is able to turn every circumstance around for a long-range good. Note that God is not working to make us happy, but to fulfill his purpose. Note also that, that this promise is not for everybody. It can be claimed only by those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And such people that choose this have a new perspective and a new mindset on life. They trust in God, not life's treasures. They look for their security in heaven, not on earth. And they learn to accept and not resent what they may face in life because they know God is with them. So God's purpose ultimately is not an afterthought. He will not withhold anything you need to live for him. Living awake to God is our deepest, most true purpose. And I'd like to finish with the words of Chris Pratt. I don't know if you saw this on social media, but when he was accepting the MTV movie and TV awards and the Next Generation Award that he received, he said these words. And I thought, wow, wonderful. God is real. God loves you, and God wants the best for you. Believe that. I do.